Hi everyone, so today I want to show you how I made this card um, and I'm calling this a faceted diamond tripod card because it's very similar to the faceted diamond vertical easel card that we did, um, I think it was last week or week before um, but it's just like another version of it really, it's something I came up with, this is an original design um, so please credit me if you end up making it or use it or whatever just tag me in if you up, um, upload pictures onto Instagram or wherever just tag me in um, iced images uh, but yeah it's it's actually it looks complicated but it's it's really not that bad uh, if you can make the faceted diamond vertical easel card that we did the other week you can definitely do this basically um, you're probably thinking, how on earth do you fold it flat into an envelope? Well, all you do is shut it like that, and then that's flat. And then that fits in an envelope. Mine's a little bit bulky in the middle just because of the gems I've put on the bauble. But um, obviously, if you didn't, you know, you don't have to put those gems on. Um, but yeah, so that's what we're going to be doing. So hopefully you'll like it. Uh, so let's get into it. Okay, so to make this card... Um, you're going to need some similar things to what you had for the um, faceted diamond um, vertical easel card. Similar to that, but not quite the same. So basically you're going to need um, a piece of card that is five and three quarters by eleven and a half. Or you could obviously use a five and three quarter by five and three quarter card blank. So that's fine as well. So we're going to start with that for starters and then we'll move on to the other pieces that you need. So... On this um, piece of card, you'll obviously already have your five and three quarter inch halfway um, score line. If you haven't got that, then obviously put that in. So if you're using a five and three quarter by 11 and a half, you're going to score at five and three quarter. That's your middle line. OK, you also need to score at two and seven eighths and at eight and five eighths. OK, so that gives you three three score lines so you can put your scoreboard away but as with the other card that we did you need to bring in your cork board and your um, score pal thing so we're just going to go ahead and fold well the first the first fold needs to be a mountain fold so we're just going to give that a quick burnish then you want a valley fold like that And then you want a mountain fold. Okay, so you end up with that. So now what we're going to do is we're going to start, I'll start on the left hand side and work my way across. And I'm just going to turn it round because it's easier to um, mark on here. So you need a ruler and a pencil. And we're just going to go along the first line, which is the two and seven eighths line. And we're going to do like we did before. We're going to mark at three quarters of an inch from the top and at three quarters of an inch from the bottom. So at five inches. So three quarters of an inch and at five inches. OK, and we're going to do the same. We're going to miss one and then we're going to do the same on this one. So we're going to make a mark at three quarters of an inch and at five inches. OK, so while we've got it this way round, we're going to go along this top bit here. And we're going to mark at two and seven eighths. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to mark at the middle at two and seven eighths. And last but not least at the bottom at two and seven eighths. Okay, so. Now what you want to do is if you lay your ruler on across the middle, so you're joining up all of your little dots that you've just done. Right, so then what you want to do is come along and obviously start from the left and you want to make a mark at three quarters of an inch and at five inches. And then you want to make a mark at one, two, three, at six and a half inches and at uh, one, two, three, Ten and three quarters. Okay, because then that should be three quarters of an inch in from there, three quarters of an inch from the centre line, and the same that way, 
and then the same that way okay so you've now got because you have to sort of treat that as one card and treat that as one card okay so next we're going to get our ruler since we've got it anyway ready here we're going to lay it back on and we're going to draw a line between the two dots there then we're going to take it off and draw it between the two dots there okay so you've got basically like two crosses one score and one line one score on one line nothing in the middle only on the two sides right so once you've done that you want to bring your scoreboard in and your score power and your ruler and you're going to go ahead and do what you did on the faceted diamond vertical easel card and you're just going to join up the dots and score so you end up with a diamond in the middle so we're going to go from here up to the top there from this bottom mark across that mark there and then i'm going to join them up in a minute but since i've got my ruler this way round, i'm going to complete the same over this side so that one there and then this one here and then we're going to turn it and we're going to do the other ones okay so you've got a diamond here and a diamond here it's not actually a proper diamond it's a square on its on its side but you know it's it's a diamond for me so we're going to put that away and we're going to bring in our scissors and we're going to do that the same as we did before and we're going to fold it in half just fold that edge that first bit in half and cut up that line until you reach the end of the line there okay so you end up with that and then we're going to do the same on this side so fold that end bit in half and cut up the line until you reach the end of it at that point okay so there you have your two diamond bits so now we're going to go ahead and fold on these lines like we did with the other cards so just give it a little bit of an ease ease it in and the same here you do have to coax it and you do have to make sure that corner gets pushed all the way in once you get it sort of so it's kind of getting there that's when you need to squash it nice and flat and make sure that it's flat now you might end up with what i've got there a bit of a crease if you have just try and do your best with it i've got a bit of, as you can see a bit of a crease there just try and do your best it's just because i haven't scored it properly that's why i haven't put it in the right place um something's off one of my measurements is off but anyway it's fine because we're going to cover it up so it doesn't matter and then you're going to do the same with the bottom one and the same with this other side as well okay so you should end up with that right so now what we want to do is we want to bring in our mats and our pattern layers um, and start cutting them into the shape they need to be okay so we're going to put that to one side for now right so you are going to need two um like toppers or sentiments or whatever it is you're using uh, you don't want them any bigger than two inch by two inch really obviously you want long and thin like this you can have it we don't think too big because you've only got a, a bit of a you know not that big a gap to put it in um i've chosen two little die cut identical baubles which i'm going to stick back to back okay so you want something that's um 
that you've got something you can you know you can stick back to back i did see i did have some little die cut little moose the reindeer things but i couldn't use those because they were both facing the same way so if i turned it round one head would be one way and one head would be the other way so it wouldn't work so that's why i went for a symmetrical um shape like the bauble okay you also need two mat panels that are two and five eighths by five and a half okay um and then you also need another mat panel that is two and a half by two and a half you also need two pattern pieces that are two and three eighths by five and a quarter okay now on the back of your mat panels not the two and a half one just the two and five eighths by five and a half pieces if you turn them over and you'll see i've already I've already drawn on mine. Okay, now there's a lot of pencil lines on here and you only need some of them. You don't need all of them. What you want to do is you want to turn, obviously you've you've really cut them in half. So if you turn them around like this, you want to find halfway. Okay, now halfway is two and three quarters. Okay, so you want to mark at two and three quarters because that's half of five and a half. And then what you want to do is you're then going to just draw a line across so obviously mark two and three quarters here two and three quarters here join it up same on this one join it up so from the center here if you put your two pieces together so you've drawn your halfway line start in the middle and from here you're going to draw not draw you're going to measure out one and three quarters of an inch and make a mark then you're going to go back to that line measure one and three quarters up make a mark mark go back to the line again one and three quarters down make a mark okay then go back to the center again and this time you're going to measure two and a quarter out two and a quarter up and two and a quarter down then you're going to draw a line between all of your two and a quarter marks and all of your one and three quarter marks okay and you repeat the same thing but the mirror image of that on your other piece and i would write on a right and a left because then you'll know which way round you're going to be okay and then what you want to do is you want to cut these out now i am going to put tape on first and then cut it out because my tape i can actually see through it i've drawn my pencil lines quite dark so i can actually see where pencil lines are but i should be able to see through um where those pencil lines are it's just a little bit easier if you've really got tape on before you then start um you know cutting it up and then trying to work out how to tape corners and triangles and whatever okay so we're going to go ahead now i'm just going to cover this with tape okay so there's my pieces all done so i'm now going to go ahead i'm going to cut these out so i'm going to cut along the outside line first so that'll be one piece then I'm going to cut along the inside line and then I'm going to cut down that halfway line on both pieces. Okay, so as you can see, I've cut those bits out. Now, the little arrowy bits, these, you don't need but they'd look quite cool on a scrap card maybe you could do like a little chevron pattern or you know you could do all sorts with that so there i'll probably keep those and use them on a card or maybe even like that as a little diamond i don't know they'd be quite in i think they'll be coming quite handy so i'm going to keep those and use them on a scrap card right so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our card base and basically this middle section here let's move this out of the way a bit this middle section here you're not going to stick any pattern or matte papers on this bit here because this bit is going to get stuck together like that which is what gives you card shape so you're only doing things on this outside piece so we're going to take our right hand piece turn it over and that is going to go on there like that and as you can see it fits quite nicely the borders aren't all even like here's a bit off but it, it's pretty good and i have to say i've tried a few different ways of doing this and I think that this is actually the best, the best way I've seen, you know, the best way I've managed to do it. So now I'm going to go ahead and stick these two side pieces down. Okay. 
Okay, so when you've stuck it down, you should end up with that. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to work out the pattern pieces. If you just keep your little triangles to one side for now, we will use them in a moment, but we just want to get sort out the, the, tri the, the pattern pieces first. So if you bring in your pattern pieces, um, now I've got one that kind of continues. I've, I've deliberately cut it so that it continues on. So I'm going to turn it over. So again, on the other side, I've written a right and a left. Now, with this one, this is slightly different. So on this one, because obviously it's slightly smaller, you're going to do the same as you do with the mat, i.e. turn it round. And then what you want to do is you want to measure across and halfway this time is going to be, because obviously it's not quite as large, halfway is going to be two and five eighths. So you measure two and five eighths here and again here and draw a line here and here and draw a line okay so then what you want to do turn it back around again you're going to start from the center again and you're going to measure from that center point that center line across and mark at one and a half and also at two and three eighths which is literally it is two and three eighths is the width of your piece okay so you're literally going to be going from you don't need to measure it actually just measure one and a half um, you're literally going to be going from the end of that line, but just bear that in mind. And then measure up one and a half, and then measure up from that, that centre point two and three eighths. Okay? Um, and the same going down. So down one and a half, down one and three eighths. Okay? And then join those up. I don't know if you can see my pencil lines, but I've got a line going all the way up here and across there, and I've got the same here. Okay? And you want to do the same on this one. So again, from the centre going out out up up down down okay so again we're going to cover this in tape now this one i'm going to have to draw my lines on a little bit darker because i'm not going to see that over the under the tape Okay, so once you've taped them up, you can then go ahead and cut along those lines. Okay, so you're left with that. So this, these two triangles here, you can cut down the centre line if you want, and you can use them on your card, it's up to you. Um, uh, I will be using them, I think, on mine. I'm just going to put them to one side for now because I need to figure out what I'm going to be using. So I'm just going to leave them to one side for now. So these pieces, I'm going to go ahead and stick onto my card. Okay, so once you've stuck them down, you end up with that. So now what you want to do is go ahead and take your two and a half inch by two and a half inch square and you're just, you can turn it over and on the back, uh, if you just draw in half diagonally, so you can take it into four, um, four pieces basically, um, and then I would tape it and then cut it up because this should be the same as, oh, hello, that way around, no, nope, that way around, like that. So as you can see, these pieces we've cut out were would make a two and a half inch square. Okay, so I'm just going to draw my lines and then I'm going to tape it and then I'm going to cut it up. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to stick the little triangles in place on our card. So these are going to go in here and in here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stick those down.
okay so that's what you end up with so now you can either leave it like that if you want or you can put some pattern pieces in just to give you an idea of what where everything is going to sit okay i'm just going to fold it how it will be so it will be like that so you're going to see these four triangles the most okay and then these here on the outside you're not really going to see that much so i quite like the fact that that's red there so I think I'm going to leave it like that and I'm not going to use those little that the two little triangles that I've got there okay um you can use them if you want to and I was originally intending to use them on these two triangles here but I'm looking at it now I actually don't think I'm going to use them I think it'll be fine as it is I think if I put that in it might be a bit too busy so I'm going to leave those off and I'm just going to use use it like that so now what we need to do is we're going to need to put some tape on this inside piece before we do that, you want to take a bit of red tape and just put a little bit, uh, there's a couple places you want to put it. Let me just get my oh, red tape. Okay. So you want to put a bit of, you want to take your bit of thread. Now, I don't think I mentioned this at the beginning. You need a piece of thread. Now, I'm using nylon, like fishing line, which you can't see, okay? Um, but you can use like cotton thread. If you want to you don't want to go too thick with it i would say like a cotton sewing thread is probably the thickest you want to do um because you'll just end up with bulk in the card so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to put um my, this i've cut this so it's about six inches long it doesn't need to be that long really but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put it on the other side of my red tape stick it to my red tape and then we're going to stick it actually i need to move it a bit further over Stick it right on the end of your red tape, like that, and then I'm going to stick it right at this top, the top of the, um, the top, the point where your diamond is. You want to stick it that way. Now, as you've noticed, I stuck it going upwards. The reason I've done that is because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this backing off, and I'm going to bring it down like that because then it's stuck in two places and hopefully it's then not going to get loose so that's the idea i'm then going to take some normal tape and just stick it over the top of it and along this top section because all of that's going to need um doing in a minute and you will notice that i'm only doing one half i don't need to do this side because it's going to stick to it so i don't need to do that right and then we're going to take this one here I'm going to bring it all the way down so it's in line like that and then I'm going to make sure it's nice and tight but not taut that it contorts the card and then I'm going to put the red tape over the top again I'm going to peel this off and I'm just going to bring it back on itself just take it off to one side and cut off the excess like that and then I'm just going to put another piece on the bottom here. And then we're just going to carry on taping as normal. All around the edges, making sure you stay on the right side of that crease. Okay, you don't want to go over the crease line. Let me just... Now you'll notice I've kind of gone over my back in a little bit there, but that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to peel this backing back, stick it down, and then just take the backing off. So now we can just take off all of the backing. And then we're just going to literally fold the other side over the top and give it a good press down. And then when you open it up, you have your card ready to go so now as you can see there's a nylon well i've got a nylon wire here but obviously you'll have a thread or whatever you have and that is where you're going to stick your um you're going to stick your embellishment so i'm just going to put some uh tape or glue on the back of this and then stick one on the back and one on the front and stick the two together and then the wire will be trapped the nylon thread will be trapped in the middle um, and then you just need to put a greeting on it and you're done so obviously you can write on the back if you wanted to 
Um, there's, you're a bit limited to write, but you have got, you know, you're not going to be writing any essays on this, do you know what I mean? Um, but I quite like it because obviously it's sort of see-through. If you wanted to, you could go ahead and add extra dangly bits in here. Um, just maybe wrap them around the back there. Um, or, yeah, whatever you want to do, really. And then to go in the envelope, it just folds flat like that. Okay. And so the person would just take it, open it up, and there it is. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead now and stick this on. Okay, so there we go. There's your finished card. Um, obviously, that still spins. Mine's got a little bit baggy, <clears throat> but actually, that gives it a bit of um, a bit of room for manoeuvre. So all I need to do now is add a greeting on it and then we are done. So I hope you like the card. Um, please like and subscribe um, and leave a comment below. I will try and get back to as many comments as I can. Um, but as the comments increase, uh, it does get a bit more challenging to do. But I will try to because I do think it's important um, that I, you know, if you bother to leave the time to comment, it'd be nice for me to bother to re reply. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, so yeah, so um, if you do this card again, please credit me because this is my original design um, and it's come off the back of the other original design I did the previous week. Uh, so yeah, but have a go. I hope you like it. Um, as I said, it's quite nice because obviously it folds flat for posting. Uh, there's a little bit of bulk there, obviously because I put the gems on the um, on the bauble. But if you had a completely flat um, thing in the middle there, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a problem. So yeah, so I hope you have a go and. Uh, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.